Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Blake here and I'm back with another music related YouTube video and in this one we're going to talk about specifically being a musician on YouTube. So I'm going to go over my guide of things I've sort of learned over the last few years on how to grow as a musician on YouTube. I've wanted to make this video for a little while so I've had a few musicians kind of when I've been out performing that have chatted to me that I might have kind of mentioned my YouTube or spoken about it and they've asked me for any ideas for tips or they kind of are on YouTube but not really sure how to build their community, that sort of thing. So what I'll say is, first of all, I'm very thankful to everyone that's followed my videos and that does interact with them and check in with me. My next target is currently 5,000 subscribers on the channel, which would be absolutely amazing. And also what I'd say is, you know, these things are the key to, for me anyway, kind of sustainable slow growth, which is really what you want on YouTube. You don't want a sudden viral video and then nothing after that and no one's interested in your videos. You want to build up a community of people that are interested in you and the content you put out. And finally, just before we get into it, there's two kind of disclaimers I want to make. The first one, as I've already sort of covered, is that while these things hopefully will help you and they'll help your channel look more professional and help you think of content to put out there and attract new viewers, it is kind of not an overnight fix. You know, these things take time and it's really about building up a big library of videos on YouTube to be discovered. And then the second thing is some of these things will be generally related to anyone that's got a YouTube channel, but some of them are specifically related to my experiences as a kind of YouTube musician. So they'll be related to music related channels on YouTube. So bear that in mind. So here are 10 tips that will hopefully help you to do that with the most important tips coming first and obviously then lesser important ones coming later on and I'll put timestamps in the description below as well. Okay so firstly the most important one is one you'd have heard about before if you've seen this kind of video before but I'm going to come at it from a different angle and that is consistency. So obviously the way a lot of kind of people in these kind of videos promote consistency is they'll say when you're trying to build your audience giving them a set day every week let's say when you upload a video is good because you kind of build that rapport with your audience they get excited for x day when your content's coming out whatever and while that's true what I find for me is more important is basically the way that YouTube works so obviously on things like Spotify and Instagram and things like that the most recent posts or the most recent music or whatever is prioritized over the older stuff. So, you know, you see it on Spotify with fresh new finds and the Spotify picks for the weeks and those playlists and that sort of thing. And the way their algorithms work is such that really it focuses on what's new. So what new music is out, what new social media content is out, whatever. The great thing for me about YouTube is it is a massive video repository. So there's hundreds of millions, probably more than that, of videos on YouTube and I don't know about you but I've got a lot of people that I watch and really enjoy their videos on YouTube and some of them I'll watch new ones when they've been released so you know this week this creators just put this out but I'll also commonly find myself watching someone's video from two three years ago and why that comes important in terms of the consistency is if you keep putting out videos you're gonna have a massive library of videos on YouTube which means when you start getting people follow you they've got loads and loads of a back catalogue essentially to look through so it's really important for your kind of sustainable growth that you've got loads of content already on there that people can discover and then keep looking through and that's why I say this is a kind of slow progressive process because obviously it takes a while to make all that content but the great thing is once you start doing it you'll find that videos from quite a while ago let's say three months ago are getting views and they're getting comments and things when you're already past that and you're thinking about your next video which is 10 videos later let's say so consistency is really key to build up that repository build up that kind of content that makes your own brand and makes what you are on YouTube so the first thing I say is consistency but we have to balance that with point number two and point number two is quality so in terms of the quality of video it doesn't really matter as much at the start of your YouTube channel or when you're quite small in terms of viewership or whatever in terms of the quality of video. Don't get me wrong, if you have a better camera and all that sort of stuff, it's better and we'll come on to that later. But if you're consistently putting out videos which are similar quality to each other, then you're kind of making the same level of content that's being consistently delivered. And where this is important is when you think about the question, how often will I post? So when I say consistently, that sort of depends on you. It depends on your lifestyle, 
we all have different responsibilities. We might have work or kind of another job. You might work as a musician full time or you might have a non-music career, but then you also do music stuff and you want to make YouTube with that or put some things on YouTube. You might have kids or, you know, family members to look after that sort of thing. You might have various different responsibilities. So you need to think about in your lifestyle, how much can you commit to where you say, without fail, I can achieve this. So every week, could I do a video once every week? Could I do a video once every fortnight if you're really busy, for instance? So once every couple of weeks, could I do an upload? It doesn't really matter. I mean, obviously the more frequently you put videos on there, then the more naturally views and everything you're gonna get. But you want to balance where you're not gonna burn out. You're gonna have kind of a lot of videos that have been put up there but not at such a rate where you don't have time to think about them, record them, edit them, promote them, and all that sort of stuff. So you've got to bear that in mind. Before you start filming, decide how often you're gonna put content up. Ideally, think of your next couple of videos, and I always try to have the next few in mind before they're filmed, so you don't find yourself at a loose end, and then try and commit to it the best you can. Obviously, things in life will sometimes get in the way, but try and commit to it the best you can. YouTube's also quite clever, so as much as you can obviously put a video to post as soon as you've uploaded it, you can also upload it but set it to post in the future, let's say three or four days in the future. So if you're going on holiday or you're away or you've got family commitments or whatever, YouTube can still post that video for you and you upload it a few days earlier and then you kind of stick to your consistent schedule. So the second point is consistency but bear in mind a kind of continuous quality for your videos. Okay, now this next point is a little bit controversial, but for me is quite important, and that is that you vary the kind of content you put on YouTube. This has been a massive thing for me. So there's lots and lots of very talented musicians that I've met and ones that I haven't met but are out there whose YouTube channels are just performances or just music. So just performances, just cover songs, maybe the original songs and maybe music videos. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And you can do that if you want to do it. And you know, you will get some views and that sort of thing. But even if you're a kind of pretty proactive musician and you're putting out frequent covers or frequent original songs, you're very much limiting the demographic of people that are searching for that content. So I'm not sure about you, but when I'm on YouTube, very rarely will I ever search for cover of X song, cover of Y song, or original song, this kind of genre. It's just not something I do. I don't really find that much music through YouTube. And when I'm looking for a cover, it will probably only be if I'm gonna cover it myself and I think what's been done out there already. I think there's a key kind of learning point here, which is think about a few things. First of all, what can you offer to your audience, the people who are viewing you, as well as maybe liking you and thinking you're a talented musician. Can you give them anything else which would make them want to subscribe to you? So other than just giving them live performances, one of the reasons I thought to kind of vary my content was because I thought, what are people looking for? I would say that apart from in a few cases, and yes, there's a few famous people on YouTube like Boyce Avenue or maybe like Walk Off The Earth or people like that that are more or less just music and they're fantastically talented and they have loads and loads of subscribers. That's not commonly what happens. What will happen is you put your music up, people might view it, but it's a very, very, very long path for getting found, getting discovered, people following you. But if you vary your content, so you not only do things like live performances, but you might do things like vlogs or guitar lessons or reaction videos. I'm obviously talking about things I do, but you can do whatever you want under the kind of umbrella of music or even in another field if you're interested in something else. So let's say you do music and art, you can do some art videos as well. So there's a few real benefits to varying your content. The first is that you get your personality out there. Don't get me wrong, if you're a great singer-songwriter or that sort of thing, that's great, but making a connection with someone is so important for them to want to buy your music, stream your music, whatever. Obviously doing things like vlogs is great because you're chatting to the camera, you're talking about your day in the life as a musician and so on. And really what's important for me is if you make lots of different kinds of content, as I do, so I make vlogs like this, I do my own performances, I do music videos, but I also do things like gag reels occasionally, I do reaction videos, I do things where I promote other local musicians. So I do lots of very kind of distinct content. And the good thing about that is each one of those styles of content will attract a different audience. 
Some audiences will be big, some will be small, but nevertheless, an audience that watches guitar lessons might not be interested in reaction videos. So what you're doing is bringing a wide kind of array of people together. And I'd strongly suggest if you wanted to grow on YouTube, it's a good way of doing it because you have a lot more fun. You know, you, you can make lots of different videos, not just performance ones, which are good, don't get me wrong, but can sort of lead to burnout if every video you're doing every few days or every week or every is just another cover another cover another cover original song that sort of thing it can be very easy to kind of lose motivation but doing different videos is challenging it's helpful for editing it's helpful for finding new audiences so a top tip from me and something i found really useful and i'm very appreciative of everyone that has viewed my channel as a result of this kind of varying the content is to mix up the kind of videos you're making. Okay, so point four is about using YouTube Shorts. So obviously YouTube Shorts is a semi-new thing on YouTube. I mean, it's been around maybe a couple of years now and it's been brought out to basically rival TikTok and the other short form content that you get on mobile and, and so on. So Instagram Reels and, and that sort of thing. And I'd say, first of all, that long form videos like this should be the bedrock of your channel. They take the most time to think about, you can put the most effort into them, you get so much of your personality across, you can kind of make lots of points, you can do really impressive things in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Whereas in YouTube short videos, you've got one minute and that's it, and it's gotta be in a different aspect ratio, it's gotta be in kind of filmed on your phone so it suits the sort of aspect ratio of a mobile or similar. And they're really useful for getting a lot of views quickly, but sort of just as a little, this is a very small taste of my channel. So you might use it for little performances you've done up to a minute or funny things that you've done, that sort of thing. And really, um, as I mentioned before, most musicians nowadays are on social media anyway. So even if you don't have a YouTube channel, you probably have an Instagram or a Facebook or a TikTok or whatever. And the great thing about YouTube Shorts really is you can repurpose some social media content you've already put out there. So you take a video you put on an Instagram reel or that you put on TikTok or whatever and you just go into the YouTube app and you kind of upload it as a YouTube Short. So for TikTok, I should mention that if you put up a TikTok video and then you download it, you'll get a video which has the little TikTok watermark bouncing around. So there is a website you can use, it's called SnapTik, and I'll put a sort of link to it in the description below. And all you do is you copy the sort of video URL for the TikTok video, put it into SnapTik, and then it'll let you download a version without the little kind of watermark bouncing around. Worth doing, just because it basically results in more views and more more people interacting with it but i'm just bringing this in to basically say again about demographics youtube shorts are worth doing okay so points five and six are sort of along the same line so they're more or less going to be combined point five is about filming quality so i mentioned earlier that when you're starting out you don't need all the most high-tech equipment for filming, and that is true. However, having said that, there are lots and lots of kind of affordable cameras out there now that film in HD, and virtually all of the kind of YouTube channels you watch will film in HD. There is the option to film in 4K, which is obviously like the level up. I wouldn't advise it. So the simple reason I wouldn't advise it is that 4K files are absolutely massive. They're really, really big, which means when you come on to do editing, and you've got a 10 minute video full of 4K files, that is gonna be loads and loads and loads of data, which means although the picture's gonna be very crisp, it's gonna take you ages and ages to do all the editing, it's gonna take up loads of memory on your computer, it's not worth doing 4K, in my opinion, unless you're doing something that requires it. So I use a Canon EOS M50, but obviously it depends on what you're looking for, what your budget is and all that sort of stuff, but I thought I'd mention it in case you're interested. And a key thing you can do to improve the quality of your video is lighting. So as you can see, I'm lit quite well at the moment, and behind the camera, just a little behind the scenes, you can see I've got a lamp. And it's just like a normal desk lamp. And the reason I've got it is because the more your camera can pick up light, then the more kind of information it's gonna capture, the clearer the picture's gonna be. So if I turn off my sort of light, 
I mean, it's too dark, but even when I lean in, you can see that the picture's not as clear. It's a little bit grainy, this kind of background light, but it doesn't work quite as well. There we go. So it's quite important that you get a light source behind the camera that can kind of light you up well, whatever you're doing, whether you're performing, whether you're talking, you've got a vlog, that sort of thing, so that you've got the most you can possibly get in terms of detail out of the camera setup you're using. So lighting is so important. Try your best to kind of have lights on you while you're filming and then it's going to be crisp and clear. Okay, so part six is related, like I said, and it's about the quality of your editing. So don't get me wrong, I think I'm okay at editing, but I'm not Mr. Beast. You know, if you watch one of his videos or a YouTuber of that kind of size and caliber, mostly what they'll do is bring in so many things with editing that they are kind of capturing your attention every, let's say, five seconds. So things popping up on screen, transitions, sound effects, whatever, different colors popping up, that sort of thing. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but just a little bit of editing for your videos will make a massive difference. So get yourself a video editing software. The reason you wanna do it is, first of all, people will watch longer. If they think the video is quite well made, they're enjoying it, there's no reason that they're, you know, they're kind of questioning the quality of the video. That's the first thing. And then the second thing as well is it kind of gives your brand a sort of, um, watermark it gives you your branding for your YouTube channel you know my brand if you like I've got kind of different logos and things when I do my thumbnails I've got a certain way of doing my thumbnails if you look through all my videos recently you'll see that they're all done in a kind of similar way and I've also got as you will have noticed a similar way of editing for my YouTube channel so I've got the same kind of transitions I use I've got the same kind of outro that I use as well I've got the same sort of filming style and all those things that I've put in are kind of on purpose. There's lots out there, it depends on budget, it depends on what you want to do, it depends on how heavily edited you want your videos. So definitely have a look at it and kind of work out what editing software is good for you. I use something called Camtasia. I can strongly recommend it. It's very user friendly, so if you're not great at editing or you haven't done a lot of it before, I think it's pretty easy to understand and when you first install it, there's like a little wizard that will kind of go through different bits and tell you what happens in different parts of the software. It also lets you record, so you can like record whatever's going on on your computer, so if you wanted to say like, subscribe to me and press the button, you can record you pressing the subscription button, let's say. But obviously it depends on your budget and what you're after, so there's things that are more expensive and there's things that are cheaper than that as well. There's free versions, but they vary in terms of how good they are and how kind of professional, if you like, the editing software looks when you've made your videos. So yeah, point six and kind of five together is filming quality and editing quality will help you to kind of build your brand and build your community in the long run. Okay, so point seven is about thumbnails. Now I'm sure even if you've used YouTube only for a short amount of time, you've probably seen two types of thumbnails. You've probably seen one that looks very edited, there might be some text on it and it might have a kind of quite high quality picture and you can kind of see from the thumbnail what the video is about and then you'll see another one which is not kind of as common I have to say because most people sort of know about this but it'll just be essentially a still image that's been taken from the video. So if you don't put a thumbnail up on your video, which you can do when you're editing your video on the kind of YouTube studio uh, app or online or whatever, then it'll just take a random picture from the video that you've taken and put that as the kind of thumbnail for, you know, click me, this is a video that's just been uploaded. Now really, for me, when you see that sort of thing, and you can see that when you look at some of my old videos, because I didn't used to do this a couple of years ago, it kind of looks a little bit amateur. I don't mean that in a bad way, I just mean that, obviously, if you're trying to draw people in to click on your video, one of the things that's gonna bring them in is the thumbnail, when someone searches for a video, and then the searches come up, one of the main things you look for is the picture. What does the picture look like? Does it look like something I'd be interested in? And when you go and look at any of the big YouTubers and you see what pictures they put on, they're always quite kind of interesting. So I'm gonna do a demonstration now. So this picture is one that I took to represent the sort of thumbnail for this video, but I need to edit it so it looks like more of a suitable thumbnail for this picture. So when you're clicking on this video, you're watching it, you'll see the thumbnail and it'll be this, but it'll be edited. Well, what I'm gonna do is, what I usually do to make thumbnails, I'm gonna use something called Canva. So Canva, C-A-N-V-A, 
is a kind of photo editing software. You can get it on computer, I think, but I use mine on my phone. And you essentially put a picture in there and then you can change it. You can add filters, you can add shapes, you can add text. You can change it in such a way that it looks like a thumbnail for a YouTube video. So the way my process works is I'll take the picture I want to take with my camera, I'll then send that to my phone, and then on my phone I'll edit the picture in Canva. Once it's edited, I can save it into my email and then obviously if it's in my email I can download it and I can use it when I'm editing my YouTube kind of description for my video. Okay, so here's my phone and we've got Canva on and you can see here in my kind of recent designs, previous YouTube thumbnails I've made. So if I click on one, here's one I've recently done which was for a reaction video. So now I'm gonna put our picture in and we'll see what it comes out at when I've edited it and put on the text and put on all the kind of required edits to make it into a thumbnail. And therefore you've got an edited and much more professional looking thumbnail you can use for your YouTube channel. It doesn't take you long and honestly, it's worth doing. It makes it look way more professional. So these last few points will be just about small kind of changes that you can make which may help engagement or help people stay on your channel. I think most of them you'll know about but I'm going to cover them anyway just in case you don't. So at point eight we've got using cards and kind of consistent outros. So when you're editing your videos there will be an option to add cards in and these are really useful. So especially in long form videos like this, every few minutes or so you can add a card where something pops up on the screen and essentially you can click on it and it'll take you to another video or another playlist or something like that. And you can put in those cards whatever is useful for you. So it's a good idea to make playlists on YouTube because if a viewer is interested in one type of content, so let's say vlogs like this, then they might be interested in my other vlogs, let's say. So therefore, when I was gonna do the cards for a vlog video, I might put links in to other vlog videos or something that might be of interest to the person that's watching. So definitely think about using those things and making playlists for your content. Okay, point nine really depends on whether you're gonna be making content where you're chatting to the camera like this. If you are, then I'd strongly recommend you use some of the large library um, of kind of music available on YouTube that is not copyrighted. If you go on YouTube, there is a section, and I'll show it on the screen now, where you can go on and look through copyright free music and you can download it. And what's great is you can search through this music based on like genre, so if you're looking for rock music, pop music, whatever, but you can also search through it based on like the feel. So if you've got a really happy, funny video, then you might want kind of up, up bright sort of music. Music. If you've got a scary video where you're talking about like mysterious things or whatever, you might want dark music. And it's easy and you can go from there and continue building your kind of YouTube channel without copyright strikes and all that sort of stuff. Okay, the final point. First of all, thank you for watching this whole video. If you're still with me, I've tried to make it as useful as I can and I've tried to cut it down where I can, but I appreciate it's a long video. If you can use these tips, I really hope they're useful. And if they are, please let me know in the comments below. Please like the video, please share it and all that sort of stuff. Now, what I'm doing right now is really what you should do as well when you're building your YouTube channel. I know this is obvious, but promotion essentially. So as well as promoting it on social media channels and promoting it kind of wherever you can. So I do Facebook, Instagram, TikTok sometimes, Twitter sometimes, Reddit and so on. Some musicians also have a mailing list so they might send emails out saying I've got a new video out, that sort of thing. Um, it's definitely worth promoting your stuff. It's also worth promoting it inversely and what I mean by that is on your YouTube channel you can link your channel to your social media which I'm sure you know but just mentioning it in case you haven't done it so you can click from your YouTube channel onto your other social media and in your descriptions of videos you can also copy links in so if you wanted to copy links in of your social media or your recent music you've released all that sort of stuff you can do that and if you have the same I don't know six or seven social media tags and you want to put them in every video YouTube's very clever and you can do that thing where you copy the description for an old video and paste it into a new one so all of those links can be copied in and then you just edit it as you want to and say this video is based on XYZ and you've copied in all that information for those links. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that video. That was as much as I could squeeze into a video on how to kind of 
hopefully have success and grow on YouTube and specifically if you are a music type creator on the platform. Hope you found it useful. If you did, please like it and please let me know that you found it useful. If you like music related content in general, then I do stuff usually every week and um, you can stay on top of that by clicking the subscribe and notification bell buttons. Then you get notified every single time I do a new video, which usually is about every week or so. So thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Same to you